Disclaimer, this is independent research that is not connected to any government or private agency involved with the X-37 space program. How's it everyone? I'm Silent J with Surf Tritonic. In this video expedition, we will cover part 4 of the X-37 space program explained, outlining the military space plane's orbital offensive strike capabilities. But first, let's review the US Space Force X-37 unmanned orbital fleet. And for a more in-depth analysis, check out part 1 and 2, link is down below in the description. The term OTV, or Orbital Test Vehicle, is the title for each X-37 mission of which 6 have been made public with 2 more launches classified by the US military and an additional 2 previous missions flown by NASA before the program was turned over to the US Air Force. This makes a total of 8 X-37 missions starting in 2003 with unofficial number of 10 plus spanning over the last 18 years. Each X-37 spacecraft have different vehicle designations corresponding with each new production model design variant. The first being the X-37 titled Space Maneuver Vehicle or SMV-1. The X-37A is named the Unmanned Orbital Vehicle or UOV-2. The program's primary spacecraft, the X-37B, is known as Orbital Vehicle 3 and Orbital Vehicle 4 giving the space fleet a total of four active military space planes. The largest, X-37C Mark IV, is currently in the final phases of production and or is prepping for her maiden test flight designed to be sent into orbit via the Falcon Heavy or Delta IV Heavy launch delivery systems. Due to the X-37's increased size and weight of nearly over 33%. Officially, the U.S. states the X-37 space program does not conduct offensive military operations, nor is the X-37 carrying any weapon systems. Yet, in recent years, China, Russia, and other nations have been actively engaged in a secret space arms race as to not violate international treaties. The U.S. Defense Department also conducts space weapons testing, creating the U.S. Space Force, a separate branch of the armed forces that primarily operates in space and self-regulates their own chain of command allowing for a version of don't ask don't tell about space-based weapon systems and testings. Currently the OV-4 X-37B on the OTV-6 mission is testing a microwave beam emitter that uses an energy stream to control high altitude drones and UAVs conducting ground operations. This orbital guidance laser also has the potential to jam or disrupt aircraft radar and navigation sensors that for all intents and purposes render modern day jet planes blind or disabled. This force multiplier is designed to operate in conjunction with the US Air Force 5th and 6th generations of advanced stealth fighters like the F-22 Raptors and F-35 Lightnings, allowing the US Armed Forces to, to develop ultra high-tech aircraft continuing to project air power superiority on a global scale with a smaller air force, supplemented and assisted by orbital platforms with rapid support capabilities. Eventually, as avionic technology advances, strike fighters will have their own ability to achieve suborbital atmospheric flight configurations, merging space planes and jet fighters into one autonomous weapons systems platforms. Project Thor was the U.S. Air Force first strike proposal during the Cold War, utilizing specialized satellites to drop tungsten rods roughly the size of telephone poles, referred to as kinetic weapons or rods from God. These 20 foot long by 1 foot wide rods would reach Mach 10, impacting the surface at over 7600 miles per hour, releasing a 10 to 20 kiloton explosion with no radioactive fallout. These can target hardened underground bunkers, penetrating hundreds of feet below the ground, eliminate command centers that no other weapon systems could. During the 1970s, at a cost of $230 million per rod was unimaginable, but these days not so much. A scaled down version called kinetic bombs, also known as shells from hell, can be deployed by the X-37s. Measuring 17 inches tall by 4 inches wide, slightly larger than a 2 liter bottle of soda, reaching near 5,000 
3,000 miles per hour during descent, impacting the surface with a 2 to 4 kiloton detonation comparable to that of a small tactical nuke. The X-37 SMV-1 can hold 20 of these tungsten shells, taking up less than half the space of the cargo section. From orbit, the X-37 has a 15 minute or less response time to any target location in the world, like mobile ICBM launchers, a missile complex preparing to launch a nuclear warhead, or multiple types of military threats. On the oceans, a spread of two to four tungsten bombs can be dropped on a large naval vessel formation or for low tillis. The force of four kinetic projectiles impacting the water at two kilotons each can capsize navy ships with the energy traveling through the water as it hits the hulls. Even a large aircraft carrier can be thrown over, assuming a direct hit has not already blasted the ship in half already. Although using kinetic bombardment is reserved for last resort scenarios, as other countries would consider this type of attack the same as a nuclear weapon. Additionally, kinetic bombardment can act as an emergency strategic defense option if ASAT weapons attacks knocks out the U.S. military's defense network and early warning systems, as the X-37s can be operated independently from traditional command and control networks, allowing shielding for U.S. forces while military networks are repaired and brought back online. The X-37 space tether systems, or magnetic grappling cable, enables a spacecraft to connect and rendezvous with other orbital assets. An electronic power module can be attached to the captured object using a signal to alter or take direct control of the satellite's onboard systems. Using the remote transmitter, it can override operating systems displaying false surveillance images, disrupting communications, or sending fake relay commands. The parasite module or connected tether can send a concentrated power surge causing critical systems to fail like the solar panel electrical charging systems, orbital avionics, and trajectory controls. The X-37 can detach from the compromised satellites allowing Space Command to activate the parasite power module days, weeks, or months later making it nearly impossible to uncover or detect this form of covert space warfare. The tether system grappling cable also can be used to deorbit satellites or thrust tow them from high orbit into deep space. This was explained in the previous episode part 3, the link down below is in the description. The X-37s can also deploy kinetic missiles to intercept orbital assets. Using a higher concentration of pressurized lost tube propellant, the projectiles utilize tracking and guidance systems similar to that of ground-based ASAP missiles. The tungsten missile intercepts the object with closing speeds over 10,000 miles per hour, with impact force that disintegrates the target into thousands of debris pieces. This capacity to rapidly destroy satellites is a viable threat to detour potential adversaries from launching anti-satellite attacks against U.S. space assets. If an X-37 is within optimum range of a suborbital ICBM trajectory, kinetic missiles can intercept nuclear warheads within a 15-minute rapid response thrust burn. If the spacecraft lacks sufficient distance to achieve a precise targeting trajectory, a tungsten volley of four or more kinetic missiles can be launched at the intercept point. This creates an orbital shotgun effect of multiple impacts releasing hundreds of tungsten fragments saturating the target zone intended to damage or jolt the warhead off course. A slight amount of impact force can significantly alter the ICBM's trajectory causing the warhead to miss the target by hundreds of miles or inflicting damage to Aviomonic's nose cone guidance module preventing detonation. The new constellation of satellites for the Anti-Ballistic Missile Defense Network operates in conjunction with specialized CubeSats linked with the X-37s. The U.S. plans to expand defense assets in orbit over the next 10 years along with ground-based intercepting missile systems. To maintain real-time space defense posture, one X-37 remains in extended orbit docked to a booster service station for rapid threat response deployment. The Space Maneuver Vehicle 1 fills this role containing a payload of bombardment projectiles and kinetic missiles on standby ready tasks for space defense. 
The X-37A Orbital Vehicle 2 remains on reserve launch status, able to be equipped within 48 hours for specialized missions and multiple objectives, allowing the U.S. Space Force a secondary response asset that can rotate with the X-37 SMV-1 during its Earth return maintenance cycle. The X-37B Orbital Vehicle 3 and 4 currently perform the primary mission launch rotations. The OTV-6 mission launched May 17th of 2020 is projected to remain in orbit some 950 days as each flight sets a new duration record giving the space plane an estimated return date of December 2022. Between missions, the second X-37B on the ground is analyzed, refitted, upgraded, and prepped to accommodate OTV orbital objectives and mission parameters for the next scheduled launch window at the start of 2023. The largest X-37C Mark IV unmanned variant is in the final production phases awaiting active service via the Falcon Heavy or Delta IV Heavy rockets to deliver the spacecraft's maiden test flight into orbit. The Mark IV is designed to expand the space fleet's mission and operational capacity, delivering nearly twice the payload into low and high Earth orbit trajectories. This will bring the total number of active space planes to five, with another X-37C production cycle projected to be completed by 2024. The X-37 program goal for OTV missions and space defense is to field a fleet of six X-37s by 2025 for orbital missions and strategic role as force multiplier for the U.S. Air Force 5th and 6th generations of stealth fighters. How to tell the difference between the X-37 orbital vehicle types. The SMV-1 and X-37A are both smaller than the X-37B and C variants, but the space frame's overall design uses the same configuration. The key difference is the Mark 1 and 2 main engine thruster is offset on the starboard aft drive housing section with the RCS thruster ports near the center. The X-37B and C main thruster is centered on the drive side section with the RCS ports directly above. The upgraded X-37s also have an extended ring attachment on the aft engine mount as does the X-37C added to the spacecraft for in-orbit fuel station attachment. The X-37 service module section is also utilized to dock with the International Space Station and is jettisoned at the end of each OTV mission before atmospheric re-entry when the X-37 returns to Earth. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the subscribe button for more channel content video expeditions. And feel free to leave a comment below as viewer feedback helps me improve future videos. That by the way, is absolutely free with no donations required. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful breakfast, brunch, dinner, lunch, afternoon, evening, night, or whatever corner of the globe you stay. Peace out.